All right, how you doing? I just wanted to make another video for any uh, Joseph Newman motor fans. Uh, this one's pretty interesting. Okay, this is my makeshift uh, Joseph Newman motor. I made out of a uh, microwave. It's got two microwave coils in it, and they're pretty heavy-duty wire. I got one contact on this side, and then on the other side I got right, right there, another contact. And one, it's one contact <clears throat> per coil, and the way I have it uh, working is I have the magnets north and south, and when the magnets are horizontal, uh, I have one coil fire, so it'll push one magnet down and pull one magnet up. And then when it turns 180 degrees, the opposite will, uh, coil will fire in the opposite direction <clears throat> to turn it the other 180 so it'll continue to run. Okay, that's how this is set up. <clears throat> and uh, the microwaves were donated by my brother. Thank you so much, Jim. And this is the battery pack that I'm going to use to run it. Uh, initially, I'm going to start it up with just a battery pack. And I'll hook up uh, this meter. I'll put these here. So what I have is uh, two... 9 volt battery clips put together and that's how I'm hooking the batteries to the motor and then these uh, wire clips coming off of it I have going to the capacitor except for the red one I don't have hooked up yet it's just right there and uh, I'll turn this on see the battery voltage that's the battery voltage now watch what happens when I fire it up you can see the back spikes a lot of times it'll go over the voltage and that's the back spikes now it's not running real fast and it'll probably stop if I let it run too long because the batteries are pretty dead they don't have much current in them <clears throat> and that's really what you want because as long as current is not present you, you'll get bigger back spikes now uh, the voltage that are in these batteries, when I hook the capacitor up, uh, the capacitor, these will try to charge the capacitor and it will translate that voltage into instantaneous current. At the same time, the back spikes that are coming off of it will also go into the capacitor and translate into current. So, instantaneous current. So let me show you the difference. See, right now, it's just running just with the batteries. So then I'm going to touch this onto the positive. And you can hear the difference. So all them back spikes plus the voltage in the batteries are being translated into instantaneous current, which is all you need to run a motor. So this is a pretty cool experiment. And, I, you know, I've been playing with this for a long time, and it just... The other morning, I, uh, I got up thinking, well, you know what, if I put a capacitor, what, 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 what would be the difference? Because I know Joseph Newman used a capacitor on uh, Big Eureka, and there is a huge difference. Now, take it off. Take it. There, I'll sit down here. <clears throat> so that's... That's the whole setup. I mean, it's pretty simple. Eventually, I'm going to hook up, instead of having two contacts, I'm going to hook up all the contacts on this side, and I'll have uh, four contacts. And I'm going to make it so both of these coils fire at the same time, opposite polarity, so it'll turn it a half, a deg half you know, 180 degrees. Then I'll have both coils fire the opposite polarity. So they'll be flipping, because I'm supposed to, you're supposed to be able to... According to Joseph Newman, you get much bigger back spikes when you do it that way. Now, of course, it'll take a little bit more juice, but then again, you're you're using, you know, getting more energy. And the voltage, just as long as the batteries are in good shape, they don't necessarily have to be charged, just as long as they have voltage. See, it's getting ready to die. So, there we go. Now what I notice when it's running 
after it runs for a while it'll slow down a little bit then it'll speed right back up and it'll just it'll just keep keep on running you know and with no current you know uh, just what's translated into current with the capacitor you really don't get a whole lot of uh, spark now if I put fresh batteries in there and the current makes it over here I'll be sparking all over the place it'll burn my contacts up um, you know and, and current when you charge batteries if you charge it with just voltage without current you won't hurt the battery but if you charge it with current you got to be careful that's been my experience anyway so I just wanted to show you this here cool little demonstration all right well God bless thanks for watching and uh, Greg this is for you this is what I was talking about Thought I would make a video and uh, put it on YouTube so you can see it. I'll go ahead and take this contact back off now it's just going with the batteries Yep, done. So it ain't going to run with the batteries anymore. I'll hook this up. <laughs> so this is pretty cool. And this is, uh, so it's easier to understand how Joseph Newman did what he did. He made a 7,500 pound motor turn on smoke alarm batteries. And if you haven't seen that video, it's called uh, Big Eureka, the energy, mach energy machine of Joseph Newman. And uh, very smart man. He tried pretty much half of his life trying to give this to humanity. He could have taken many buyouts and never did it. And he died in 2015. And uh, John Bedini, he basically did the same thing, but instead of using contacts, he uh, developed a Bedini circuit. And he died in 2016, four hours after his brother did. How odd is that? So. But anyway, I thought I would make this and uh, throw it up there and. Uh, In memory of Joseph Newman and John Bedini. Thanks for watching.